This bites. Your commercial's stupid, you're a no-talent hack, and your donuts are stale. I'm out of here. Fast, fast, fast. Oh. Oh. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes, and not that long ago, you know, during the pandemic shutdown, I brought Perch on the channel. We were talking about the new opportunities that were happening and that, you know, with, with the pencils down at Marvel and it felt like DC were cutting back on costs that uh, creators were going to have to go out there and start making their own opportunities. It was probably never a better time. But I think we're starting to see an exodus from DC Comics, specifically with the art talent. That is a little bit more than even Percher I probably anticipated. And obviously here would talk to me about that is El Percherino himself, the Poobop Comics. Perch, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing excellent. Now, I do want to say this before we talk about all these wonderful creators, or specifically artists, leaving DC Comics. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoy this video. Give me a thumbs down if you don't. Either way, let us know in the comments section what are your thoughts on the kind of the artist exodus that we're seeing. Obviously, the, you know, the kind of the first one up, we saw Sean Gordon Murphy venture out do a crowdfunded comic book. He had mentioned that he was going to do that. That was certainly wasn't expected. But now we're seeing, you know, Jason Fabok is going out and doing a you know a creator owned work. We see um, Jeff Johns along with uh, Gary Frank are, are doing a series of image called Geiger. We've got Tony Daniel heavily associated with uh, Batman character, the most the, the the breadwinner at DC Comics, working outside of uh, DC with with Scott Snyder, obviously their biggest writer right now. On Nocturna, we know Scott Snyder said he has two more independent projects with Jock, Francis Manupal, and now Greg Capullo is going to go and finish his Creech series that was that he started over at Image. He's going to go wrap it up. He hasn't worked on that, I think, in like almost 20 years. Yeah, it, it is. I mean, it's it's there's a couple things to read into this. I mean, you know, first off, it it indicates that you know there is viable money in crowdfunding. I think some of these creators have seen lesser known artists, uh, people who do not have as much of a track record, make some money there. Uh, I'm not talking about the big names. I'm talking about the more new people who are coming in using crowdfunding and finding some success. I think there's some artists that look at that and go, yeah, this is, uh, this is, you know, why am I not, you know, taking control of what I can do and get something out of here. And, and so that all makes sense. But, but the other part of it is, is kind of a, an ongoing kind of what, what's exactly happening at DC and, and how, how are they, either treating or how are the the existing long-term artists feeling at that company. Now, DC is moving ahead. They've got new titles. They have a lot of new creative teams and they have a lot of new faces in that company that are, you know, younger, untested, uh, you know, unknown. And it, it certainly appears to be the strategy to, you know, put some weight behind that and, and leverage more of those people. And, and in many cases kind of turn their backs on some of the bigger names. Uh, and, you know, this is something that Marvel does and has done for quite some time. You see a lot of new interior artists and the uh, the well-known artists tend to go to the covers uh, or, you know, occasional appearances. And it, it frankly, it just looks like DC is following suit. And so for a lot of these bigger names, you know, they're looking at this and I mean, who knows, probably feeling some sense of betrayal. They're probably feeling some sense of, you know, they gave a lot to the company and now the company is kind of turning their backs on them. I mean, a lot of these guys worked for DC for that reason. They didn't they didn't like what Marvel did. And so they were working at DC for that reason. And and I don't know if, if some of the relationships with some of the editors, both the ones that are still there or the ones that are now gone, also plays into this. But um, it is it is a changing of the guard with DC. And and as somebody like myself who who likes a lot of these artists very much, it's it's frustrating to see. As someone me personally, I'm a bigger DC fan than I am of Marvel because I personally follow creators over characters per you know that's just the way i kind of go with it in dc for the longest time has been much more stable and they have you know they've just spent more money on creative talent so you've had they've kind of you know had you know not a monopoly but they had a, a stranglehold on a lot, a lot of the best artists in the industry and now it doesn't feel like they're going to have that anymore like i don't know it, it felt like that was their competitive advantage over marvel comics yes they didn't have to flood the shelves they could go out there and pop an enormous number with the Batman Three Jokers, with a lot of these uh, cool miniseries. Obviously, like even the Batman Who Laughs miniseries did great, you know, with Jocka associated with it. And then over at Marvel, you know, it was a, more of a character, event-driven model, and that's why I, I kind of personally gravitated towards DC. Like, are they giving up? Like th that this was like their stranglehold or their 
a calling card in the industry and they're just like, well, we yeah. don't want that to be our identity anymore. We're just going to move away from it. Well, I mean, I mean, there could be a lot of things there. I think that, you know, it's it's cheaper. Obviously, this this approach they're doing is going to save money. And, and the company is definitely in a, in a save money kind of mode. Um, it doesn't mean it's going to happen to everyone. We do know that there are some projects that are going to have some top name artists. This isn't a, you know, just to be 100% clear, it doesn't mean that all the names and people are going. Uh, we do know that Sean Murphy has his third version of, of White Knight coming. We know that uh, there are some, you know, Dave Marquez is on Justice League. So we do, we do know that some of these names uh, are are there. But I mean, David Marquez is a relatively new name as well. So I don't know if this really fits. Yeah, Jorge Jimenez is on Batman. I think yeah. even, is it Gary Frank or Jeff John, or not Gary, Gary Frank or Jason Fabok that's doing that Batman, your Earth One Volume Three? Uh, that's Gary Frank, yeah. Okay, yeah. So these yeah. guys, just because they're taking projects outside of DC, doesn't mean they're not still working with DC. We're still going to see. Jason Faboff, Jeff Johns, Batman, Three Jokers sequel. We're just not going to see it this year. Yeah, it, it looks like it's getting drug out. And I think the other, I mean, unfortunately, as as the news has come down this week, and it's a whole other topic with uh, with Ray Fisher and, and Jeff Johns getting a lot more prominence. We'll see if that does impact that project. Um, I'm starting to feel like it will, but, but we'll see. Um, I, I think overall, uh, you know, you're just... It is very much the Marvel method. It's it's let's have the bulk of the artists be relatively unknown, relatively cheap, relatively uh, controllable, and that's you know there's just going to be fewer projects for some of these bigger name projects. It doesn't mean zero projects, but fewer. And yeah, this got to be very very frustrating for a lot of these artists. I'd be very frustrated. Obviously, you know we we've, we've seen criticism of DC kind of building up for well over a year now. Obviously. We've heard from Ethan Van Skyver, we've been hearing from Rob Liefeld. We heard a lot of rumors coming out of the firings, the bloodbath that happened at DC Comics. And, but now we're starting to have some bigger names attached to it. Jason Fabok, you know, said straight up, was like, this isn't the DC Comics that I've worked with for the past 10 years. It's a poorly run company right now. Do you think that you know, is just is this just a sign of things to come? Or is it more like they're in an enormous reset mode where they've there's been so many people that have moved on that had experience in the industry that, you know, they're, you know, you got to get the team back together and get back to where you were. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, they've got to find their new way. I mean, you know, for a lot of these comments have been going on for the, the year or two. And I know you and I have tried to provide a lot of context behind that. When you're a company and you get acquired, things change. I mean, that's, that is natural. And that's what happens with everyone. When things change, it doesn't mean an ending. And a lot of people often describe it as it's all over. But it's it's less that it's all over and more that the way it used to be is over. And that's that is clear. It's it's clear that that it's not going to be the DC it was in 2019. It's a new company and it's going to be treated different. It's going to have different rules, different culture, different environment and a lot of different faces and ultimately a lot of different kind of power players inside that company. What you're seeing right now is is the reaction to a lot of this. You're seeing that things are still shuffling. We're not in a stable place yet. And you're going to see new names and new faces be the ones who are in charge. And it will take a while for that to kind of settle out. And then you're going to find some new people who are able to use politics and use a corporate culture to kind of gain a foothold and, and do what they're going to do. And that, that's, that's very normal in companies. Um, it's not pleasant. And it often, for the people who were you know, happy or pleased or enjoyed the old way, that this, this sucks. Uh, you're, you know, your, your world's being turned upside down. For a lot of the the comic readers and and the people who are consuming this product, you know what the company always hopes is that you won't notice that you know this will all just you'll just keep buying the product and everything will be fine. I think the the thing that we see with DC is they've been so poor about managing their message and about you know being on top of their marketing that everybody's aware. It's like all their dirty laundry is out for everybody to see every single day and comment on and and speculate on. And in some cases, make rumors, in some cases, accurately report what's going on. And so, I mean, DC has to go through this transition and get to whatever it's going to be next, uh, which which may or may not be good. You know, I'm, I'm a fan of, I mean, you know, I look at this of I was a big fan of a lot of things DC did in the 80s. So my my uh, my pain happened a long time ago. <laughs> like the company has changed multiple times since then. So I I was unhappy with the uh, shift of power with uh, when Dan Didio came in long ago and other things. So you know this, that's why I often seem I think somewhat blasé about all this stuff. It's 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 another change and 
you know, I, I don't think it's going to be amazing after this. I, I liked the way the company held on to really big name artists like we're talking about. And I liked how they put them on high profile projects. And I love that you could pick up just a monthly comic and get a, you know, Ivan Rice or, or Jason Fabok on something. And it was just like they, they were just there. And, and that was great. It didn't have to be a special event or or an overpriced issue or anything like that. And, uh, it, you know, I think those days are over. And that's that's sad to me. You know, what's crazy is they actually, you know, they had a couple of pretty young, younger artists. Not that Patrick Gleason is an extremely young man, but he was relatively young in the industry compared to some of the people we're talking about, as well as like Victor Bogdanovich. They let go over to, to Marvel Comics. Not that they let, but they did. They transitioned over to Marvel Comics. Those would have been perfect replacements as kind of like the big, big name stars if, if you wanted to move on from a Gary Frank the artist or you know victor bogdanovich is the perfect replacement for a great capullo very similar styles oh, yeah. certainly inspired by that and they kind of let them get through their fingers and uh i don't know well it doesn't sound like they're going to be doing exclusive contracts anymore anyway no it doesn't but it, it also it, it's and it, i think it, it sums up a lot of what you see on the internet what you see in videos what some of the comments are from from various people is that you know this this company was run in a very uh I don't know what the best way to put it, like a shoestring way. And you had a lot of very manual stuff. It's not unlike the fact that, you know, several comic stores had, you know, old fashioned cash registers and nothing at all digital. I mean, the, the, you know, the comic store that hadn't migrated to taking credit cards yet. There, there were those places and it was ridiculous. But the comic publishers in some cases had the same thing going on. There's a lot of very old fashioned ways to manage people and manage approaches and everything else. So when you then get in there and you start, you know, firing some of them, you start laying them off. You have this very clunky, very old fashioned process. Um, and now you, you're trying to do it with a third of the people. Um, you know, a ton of stuff's going to fall through the cracks. And I think a lot of these people who have left, I, I would almost guarantee you that DC wasn't really aware that they left or didn't realize that they were slipping through their fingers. Like a, like a Victor Bogdanovich, did anyone at DC sit around a table and go, hey, this would be a good replacement for Greg Capullo. This would be somebody good to put in. I'm guessing that conversation never happened at all because they're just, there weren't the people and and it, it ties into what Jason Baybox said. It's a big mismanagement, big, just like very confused what's going on. And this is very common when you have an old fashioned kind of, you know, centralized management structure like you had under Didio and you start just pulling people out of it. It just turns into kind of Lord of the Flies. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what we're seeing. And, and that's, it's, it's sad. It's sad and stupid. You know, what's crazy is this is, this actually might be the worst time for this to be happening in DC comics. Though. Now Marvel has slimmed down their line a bit, although it's starting to fatten back up. It feels like DC is, is going to hold a, uh, hold down to a more constrained line, but you know, over at AWA with Erratic, they're launching their own shared superhero universe over at Image. I believe with the, the new Kyle Higgins, Higgins project, I can't remember uh, yeah. the exact, exact name of it, but they are also launching their own shared superhero universe. Right. So, uh, you know, they're not going to have the monopoly on the shared uh, superhero universes. There's a big player, obviously, an image that's just sort of waiting there. They've been assembling an enormous amount of talent. We've been talking about it. Scott Snyder, Jeff Johns, you know, uh, Gary Frank, Jason Fabok. You know, they, they got a lot of uh, big name creators there. AWA, Axel Alonso, the former EIC at, at Marvel Comics, he's also assembled a very large amount of uh, talent that, that he had connections with. And, uh, you know, that might be the perfect time to try and launch a new, you know, shared superhero universe because there's going to be opportunities. Yeah, I, I think that it's a it's it's terrible. It's it's it, well, I mean, on all fronts, this is dumb timing. They're trying to do things with the cinematic universe. They're trying to push things. They need they need better coordination than this. And I, you know, if it's true that where they're truly falling down on a lot of this is is basic management and basic coordination, I mean, that's even more pathetic. Uh, I think there's a lot, you know, there are potentially a lot of opportunities now that the space is going to get crowded with AWA and with uh, with image and with all these, you know, boom is going to do something. It, it's going to get overcrowded and then they're going to be a different problem where some of these names will shake out. I think some of the people who had kind of cush deals that they negotiated in their video are going to find that 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 doesn't happen again. But you know, it, it is, it, it is, this is dumb timing. The right thing to do would have been to really strengthen your base and, and push outward. And that's not what's happening. And so 
they're going to isolate a lot of people. They're really banking on a lot of these new kind of new name talents being great right out the gate. And, and that's, that's a risky proposition. Now you look at some of the future state books, there's a couple that, you know, the art looks really, really solid. So it sounds like they, you know, it feels like they have captured some good people, but you know, there's some other books where the art is terrible too. So it's, we'll see, we'll see how Absolutely. it all goes out. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pick this. If I'm BC, this is, you're right. This is not the moment. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. So, you know, I don't, I think this is, you know, they're basically DC is holding a stick of Acme dynamite. And this is all going to blow up in their faces. They're going to realize that, that maybe uh, their gamble that their character profiles were the selling point of their comic books rather than the, the strength of their creators is probably fool's gold in the end. Now, whether DC comic sales really matter to the bottom line of Warner Media, probably not, but it certainly probably does matter to the future viability of DC comics as far as printing and publishing comics, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it's an interesting time. Um, I, I, you know, I, I hope a lot of these people land on their feet. What I do think is going to happen is a few of these people are going to get out there and discover that, you know, one crowdfunding is not as easy as you think and that you don't, you don't just go over there and make a million dollars. Uh, and then two, I think, uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see how some of these other efforts roll out at some of these companies and, you know, if they can afford this kind of stuff. The one, you know, the one winner out of all this uh, is this will be the curveball of the day is Axel Alonso took uh, so much criticism for what happened at Marvel and everything else. And now I think in hindsight, we can look at that and say, maybe he wasn't the primary driver of all these problems because his, his AWA stuff is is actually pretty good. And, uh, you know, certainly Sobolski came in and not, you know, if, if anything, some things doubled down and that company got worse. So I don't know. Uh, maybe history is going to show uh, Alonzo's better than a lot of people thought. Maybe here in a few weeks we'll talk about Alonzo and Dan Didio and if, uh, it, you know, time is, is perhaps made their regimes look a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be good. 